You know, I really haven't been on Crossout. Check my friends list in a hot second. I wonder how my like my old clan mates from Crossout are doing. And uh, um, yep, I'm on a watch list now. <laughs> Oh yeah, quickly what I mentioned here again is that this update is actually coming out next week, at least based on oh, what they're saying here at the very bottom of the note. So feel free to hop on and get ready for that bad boy. Stock up your resources. But beyond that, they're also going to be releasing a little live stream testing update thingamajiggy here on the 31st. This is posted on like January 26th, so you guys got about five more days. But beyond that, let's get back to that regularly scheduled programming. Either way, welcome back, everybody. Uh, please disregard that uh, I am totally safe here. Uh... The government totally doesn't have a dot right on <laughs> no. Either way, welcome back, everybody. Today, we're talking about this nice, lovely, lovely new Hyperboya faction. We got ourselves a nice little bit of information here, and honestly, I think it's starting to round out this roster here a little bit more, so let's go ahead and take a gander. So, first things first, they just want to mention that they also have changed the legendary cabin previously from a heavy cabin to a more of a medium cabin here. There's actually a reason for that, too, later on. So, first things first, we got a brand new heavy machine gun. The Gunnier. I have no idea how to actually pronounce that, but we're just gonna call it the Gunnier. Which for a gun named Gunnier, uh, okay, sure, we'll go with that. I know it's actually like Odin Spear and all that, but at the same time, it's still hilarious to me that a gun has the like word inside it gun. Like, oh, what? Uh, okay, great name scheme there. <laughs> but beyond that, this is gonna be an interesting bit of a machine gun here because what it actually is is that it's still a traditional fully functioning machine gun, fully rotates as an axis, so it's gonna almost seem like a traditional, like an aspect or a cord or something like that you're very, very familiar with. But the interesting thing with this perk is that as it heats up, so the closer it gets to overheating, the actual more slow it fires and the more accurate it becomes. So over time, instead of the gun starting to flare out, it flares inward, oddly enough, kind of going in the exact opposite route than traditional other guns actually go. So as time goes on, you actually are getting slower, more concise shots that can better aim at a long distance. And I think also with this gun itself, is that compared to the other uh, guns at its similar class range, it actually tends to have higher damage range and accuracy overall. So it's going to be more of like a sniping variant of a machine gun, assuming you can actually maintain it at that very high thermal threshold too. So definitely a very interesting gun, and I do love the aesthetics on it as well. The almost sort of like flat turret-esque shape of it with its super engorged barrel definitely gives it a real like meaty vibe here. And if it really has like a good like ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk vibe when it starts getting closer to the overheating aspect of it, I feel like that'll just make it much more of a satisfying gun to fight. But definitely interesting to see how this will turn out. And I wonder how it would pair with things like a, a Torero cabin or anything that can sort of reset its heat capacity or extend it. So that'll be something to see down in the future. So the next thing here, we got ourselves a nice, lovely, lovely heavy cabin here, the Hewn, which I have no idea how I pronounce any of this. Any of those people who are from like that Scandinavian, Swedish, you know, scared region of the world, please tell me how these things are pronounced because I have absolutely no idea how these things are pronounced. But like I said, we got ourselves a nice heavy cabin here been teased about a little bit here but it has a nice mechanic when it comes to overheating and cooling which considering that the last one has a mechanic dedicated around that overheating component that'll be pretty interesting yeah. but it's going to talk about its parameters here but essentially it is going to be the fastest and lightest version of a heavy cabin so it's still going to be moderately more chunky than even your beefiest and medium cabins but it's not going to be anywhere near that of like the humpback or the other extremely large and boxy creations Beyond that, in terms of its overall dimensions too, it's actually a very convenient, but they call it convenient, but more or less small form factor of eight wide, seven length, and about four pins tall, which makes it a very actual stealthy cabin here. And for a heavy tier cabin, that's actually not that shabby. But in terms of its perk, let's go ahead and read about it. Each overheated weapon used in conjunction with this cabin will activate one special charge. There can be a maximum of three charges, so assume that means it benefits up to three weapons. Each charge at the cost of temporarily reducing the power and speed of the cabin will boost the cooling of the weapons, and the effects of several charges will stack. So I'm kind of curious as to how that actually turns out. The effect of several charges will be stacked. So I'm kind of curious, huh? I'm not even sure what that actually means. Because if it only has like, be a maximum of three charges, does that mean only three contribute to the charging mechanic? And then there can actually be multiple charges that you can store within it as you're using the weapon. And you can activate them at various times to either have faster cooling or not as fast cooling. Hmm. We'll have to see how that turns out in the actual battle here. But interesting actual mechanics with regards to this in terms of its, uh, if you had a radiator 
or a cooler that can actually extend the overheating duration, and then you pair it with this, does it actually make it so you don't necessarily have to have a cooler with this cabin, freeing up more of your power to actually be dedicated towards those radiators, especially considering that if the charge actually is built up as you're using the weapon, and then allows you to cool it faster depending on how long you've been using it, I wonder if that'll actually be a good way to continuously use this. Although I imagine downside, if you consume too many stacks at once, but that basically make your car go at a complete crawl as well because it will reduce your overall speed of the cabin and power as well. So if you're using a lot of tires in the car already and you are not a very speedy cabin to begin with, you're probably not going to be moving very fast. I imagine you'd probably get down there to the 50, the 40, even the 30 kilometer range if it's super highly stacked. And they also mentioned that this thing will actually pair nicely with this weapon kind of detailed in the second uh, news little story here, and that is the Northung. In the sense that the Northung here is a machine gun that gives you extra damage to your first five shots after overheating. So this weapon paired with the cabin that sort of resets or speeds up the cooling means that you can activate this perk more frequently. So it'd be interesting to see whether or not you still need to have cooled or something like this to actually decrease an over high, uh, overheating time to activate that perk more frequently, or if this is just gonna be more than enough to go ahead and use that. And you can spend it on things like cap cans, radars, or stealth instead. But interesting to see nonetheless to see how all of these actually pair out. A lot of these weapons seem to pair fairly excellently with the Hume. Although to be fair, the Hume doesn't seem to necessarily pair with the Gunnier as well. Because this one seems to pair more or less with the overheating capacity as opposed to cooling speed. So we'll have to see how this actually pairs up. And it doesn't really pair with the previous cabin here because the previous cabin was more or less for drones. So this one won't pair well with any of the cabins introduced so far. There may be ones released inside the season that we haven't heard about. But the gun here is probably going to be better suited for more or less cabins that either increase aim or overheating capacity or something along those lines. So I'm thinking more or less something like the Omni Box, or I believe the Echo here actually increased something else. Now, I'm always thinking it's probably going to be mostly the Omni Box and the Terrero. I'm thinking are going to be excellent for the Gundam. Or you can always pair it with something like the Ghost, where you can just go ahead, stealth up for a very long time, come out of stealth, load as much as you can with the overheating capacity, and then go back into stealth. Something, something like that would be useful. Or, you know, you could always use something like the Nova 2 or the Master to kind of help with that. So beyond that, we also got ourselves here a lovely couple of CKs here. Looks like we got one for the Omni Box here called the Hammerhead Fish, which, all right, not quite sure what that's about, but hey, it's nautical themed. We'll go with that. It does look like it has that very strong nautical theme with these extra tubes, but it almost look like, I don't want to say aerators or oxygen tanks, but, you know, kind of gives me that vibe. Almost seems like something that would strap off, like, what are those small two-person submarines that use for deep sea exploring. Plus, we also got ourselves here a nice little CK for what I believe is the Fuse Drone called the CK Cold. Which honestly kind of reminds me of those uh, kobold miners from uh, World of Warcraft. Those little things that are like, no, take candle. Kind of like that. And the mine here looking like one of those deep sea depth charges, except kind of elongated. Kind of looks more like a bacteria more than anything. But hmm, not too shabby. Plus, looks like it got ourselves a interesting track design back here, which honestly, maybe we should make that into another armor part for cars here or another movement part. That actually does look pretty beastly myself. But that looks like it's going to be everything here when it comes to part three of this Hyperborea faction. What do you guys think about this down below? Is it, you know, with the, the last little bit of news here, you guys, you know, finally starting to be excited for this nice little bit of season. I'm certainly interested to see how it'll turn out or if they're going to change anything with regards to, I don't want to say the mechanics of the season, but like how it's going to be implemented. Are they still going to do the nice Twitch Drops event? Are they still going to make it a, you know, season exclusive faction? Are they going to release it to a general population? I don't know. Something like that, that I'm also kind of interested to see how they changed. They haven't touched on that at all, but we'll see how that turns out. That's uh, that's the only last leg of the journey that I can see that could potentially stumble them here a little bit. But beyond that, still excited, still love the parts here, still think they look really cool. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think about it? Leave your comments down below. I don't know, guys. I want to thank you all for joining this evening. If you had fun, follow the platform. We're your favorite. We're on that YouTube. We're on that Twitch. We live stream to both. And we also have permitted streams on archive on our nice little other channel. Be on that Twitter and Discord if you want to get notified whenever we go live. As well as just join the community. But on that, guys, I want to thank you all again. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.